Hello everybody, this is Evan Rogers. I'm coming at you with another online live lessons. One of my online live lessons, it's not plural, we're only doing one at a time. We're on lesson four, we're dealing with des after nouns, ending sentences with nouns and trying to be polite with the word des. We have gone over the vocab. We have gone over one of the, one of the super exciting conversations and practiced it so we could see what we're getting ourselves into and now we're going to deal with the grammar you can join in these lessons too five bucks a month through patreon you get a bajillion lessons for next to nothing and if you don't want to pay me no money to join these lessons you could do one dollar a month or whatever you want to actually i don't think i put any limits and uh there is the super exciting gunma shirt that i've made i've already sold two and uh that's pretty exciting <laughs> i made about as cheap as i could make them Anyway, there's also stickers. That's cool. <laughs> I will. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about grammar today. Okay. We can't see your screen. Ah, I knew I was forgetting something. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Can you see it now? Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, are you guys good to go? This is Kayla and John. They've been my only students so far. Are you recording? Yes, I am recording. I triple checked. Mm -hmm. And I just quadruple checked. And everyone online has, or everyone on YouTube has just seen me double check. All right. All right. Ready to go? Yep. The grammar is not that intense here, but there's just a lot of weird things that need to be pointed out. That's kind of this one. I kind of wrote them as focus points because we just kind of got to know them. Okay, so the word nani by itself is read as nani. Uh, you probably figured that out when I said it. But uh, it's usually pronounced as nan. Like in the middle of a sentence, you're going to see nan. And no, I'm not talking about that Indian bread. <sighs> Somebody chuckled. Everyone else hates me now. There isn't really a strong pattern for how this works. It flips between nani and it flips between non when being used. But at the very least, non precedes des. And nani generally, not always, not always, precedes particles. Generally. Okay? I'm going to say this, uh, some particles. <laughs> That'll cover my tukas in the end. Uh, for example, we haven't learned what these sentences means, but uh, means what these mean. But this would be the nani kanji. If you notice that I'm, you know, this kanji right here is nani, but I didn't want to put the reading over it because this will be read two different ways depending on situations. It can be read both as nani de and also as nan de. Depending on context, it is very annoying. Sounds good. Any excitement there? <laughs> have you encountered that, Kayla? Or I actually have never seen Nani De. I've only ever seen Nande. Okay, Nani De would Nande generally means um why, and Nani De is usually used for like by what means did you do something. Sometimes you'll say Nande, oh. but it can be confusing. So Nani De does exist. All right, number two. We see a slightly new usage of ne. We talked about this. Oh my goodness. You okay? Uh -huh. Okay. I wasn't sure what was going on. We talked about this last time. Uh, we see a slightly new usage of ne in the first conversation. It's not quite blah, 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 right? Uh, it's a softening of a statement, and it almost sounds like we're identifying the liquid. That would be for the first conversation. Let me just zoop up there to remind ourselves what was going on. Uh, are it, could it? It's like we're identifying the liquid, so in that case it would have been water, that A would agree with, uh, and, and acknowledging that A would agree with us if only he had known, so to speak. It's not rude. We're not being like, it's uh, that's water, don't you think? It's nothing like that. Okay. Yep. Yep. Speaking of okay, there's a new thing that we have to learn. Random nouns begin with this O thing. Uh, I guess it's a prefix. Um, it's a politeness marker, but it's not, you're not able to, well, let's just go ahead and read what I wrote instead of me just reconstructing it all from memory. This O that we're seeing in front of these words isn't actually part of the word. Mizu, sake, cha are all words by themselves. 
the O is a prefix that's added to some, but not other, nouns. So just some of them get them. It's very annoying. It's a sign of respect, politeness, or you could even say honor in some situations. The Go in Gohan, not the guy who shoots Kamehamehas, functions similarly. Even though it is not an O, right? So it, it's very similar to the O, but it's a Go. And I, you know, I have yet to be explained properly why Go's and O's are both existing. Ask a Japanese person what the difference between O and Go is and then put them on the wrong things. Like you can't say Go Mizu. And uh, the, those are getting confused very quickly. And before you ask no, you cannot say go mizu go sake gohan or ohan ohan. So I just answered my own question. How do we know which words to put o or go in front of? I knew you were going to ask me, John and Kayla. Is there a pattern? We don't. Yeah, we don't. No, there's no, there's not a pattern. It's very annoying. You just have to see slash hear them in use and then copy it. I am sorry. There's no pattern. Please forgive me. I feel like we could just mumble in and hope they understand us. <laughs> oh, you need some water? How would you speak English? <laughs> All right. Des, this word is called a copula. However, some people are going to get mad at me. In fact, I talk about that later, so I'll save that for later. Indeed, it probably is. Oh, I made a footnote. What does the footnote say? Yeah, I am wishy-washy. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> However, it is also a distal marker. Remember what distal means, John? What does it mean to be distal? Uh, it's acting upon. That would be transitive. Yep, that's what I said. I'm tired. <laughs> it's all right, buddy. Kayla, can you save him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dis trying to remember what distal means definition-wise. No, it's totally fine. Distal is one of the words I'm using to mark uh, politeness, to be polite to somebody. Oh, see, that's right. Okay. Remember the idea of social distancing? Like you don't want to talk yeah. to, like you talk with your homeboys and your your, your soul sisters because I'm that. Uh, you don't want to talk the same way with your friends as you do your boss, basically. Or even a stranger. One day we'll actually be able to answer that. I think you've asked us that. Boy, like you, every you don't know the way I talk to my bosses. <laughs> Who is your boss? Don't you guys own that store? When I yeah, used to have a boss. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right. Well, nouns. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. So, however, it is also a distal marker. In fact, some people, are, as I'm going to say later, um, most people, are, a lot of people are going to argue it's chiefly a distal marker. It's going to chiefly mark the sentence as saying i am being polite to you do you remember the word agglutinate it was a fun word john kayla anybody want to jump on that one jump on them glutes something about beyonce <laughs> or j-lo uh agglutination is the idea of all those masses the masens the masen deshtas that we add at the end of the sentence or the the verb to change aspects of the idea instead of saying eat we might be saying don't eat or wouldn't eat or can't eat or something like that depending on how we agglutinate it nouns do not agglutinate but we will still want to display the social distance in our speech remember adding mas to the sent to the verbs made it distal when we when we said tabe mas that made it distal that made it socially polite but how do we do that with a noun if they don't agglutinate, right? If a noun does not agglutinate, how are we supposed to do that? We still want to say we're being polite in our speech. So when a sentence ends in a noun, we add des to, the, to make it distal, to make it polite, to make it socially upstanding. It's almost agglutination, but it's, it's really a completely separate word. Des is its own word, so we can't really argue it's agglutination. That's just a linguistics note for anybody out there who's going to yell at me for linguistics. Okay. Yes. <laughs> For real, yes, or are we like, what the heck is this guy talking about? I thought we were learning Japanese, no. not French. I, okay. No, I get it. Okay, good. Some people would argue it's not a copula. Remember, a copula means like X is Y. Like, I am a chunky monkey. I equals chunky monkey. That The equal sign is the copula. Copula, I mean... Like a couple, I'll go with that word instead of other words that I might be thinking of. Like a couple, it couples things, a couplink. 
Some people would argue it's not a copula. Oh well, I can see it both ways, honestly, and it might be nothing more than a distal marker. Honestly, I don't care so much as you use it correctly. So far, the only rule is, if the sentence ends in a noun and you want to be polite, add des. And then, whatever particles, like ka or yo or ne. Okay? So, is there like... Like... Uh... Or, you know, like when we add like mas to like kaki mas or masen to kaki masen, mm -hmm. is it just des or is there like a other form of des? Well, is oh, th there are very many forms of des, um, and I'm not getting into it in here because I just want to make sure we use des properly. <laughs> but um, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. uh, remember when it was negative past? We said masen deshta. Yeah. Des deshta des deshta mas oh, mashta okay. mas mashta. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're onto something. Okay. But notice, um, okay. as like after like tabe mas, we do not say tabe mas des. That's not a thing we say. I don't like after writing all of this, it might be confusing. But tabe mas. No, is, yeah, like okay. I know, I know those were like verbs. I guess I was just wondering if there was a similar to the noun for des, but you kind of answered it. So <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. After a noun, we just say des, but then the mas sentence is going to go to mas and des. Um, John raised his hand. I don't know if he did that intentionally. He gave me a thumbs up. You guys can't see on the screen, but in Skype, it's like, I have a question. Or he raised his hands and it's a thumbs up. So I'll assume that he's okay. Okay. <laughs> Number five, des also functions as a fill in the blank. We haven't encountered this yet. Um, I'll point it out when we see this. Uh, a fill-in-the-blank response to a question. Hopefully, there should be a comma there because English. You noticed that some of the answers in our drills were a bit odd. Well, you couldn't have noticed that yet because we haven't done them. In English, we answer questions with something like, yes, I do. So like, do you like pizza? Yeah, I do. Or just sometimes, yeah, right? Or no, I don't. Or yes, I will. Or no, I can't. We don't say, no, I can't go to the park tomorrow. I mean, we do sometimes, but it's not common. We just say, no, nah, sorry, I can't. And we don't frequently answer with, yes, I do eat pizza every fourth Friday. <laughs> I like that sentence better than the one I just came up with. The I do suffices. Ah, oh, I do. That will suffice. That's like taking all the fun out of marriage. Taking off all of that eat pizza every fourth Friday is essentially what Des is doing. So sometimes you're gonna see a situation where it doesn't make sense to say, yes, it is like desk. And you're just gonna have like height, nanika desk. And it doesn't quite make sense because you're expecting a verb. We'll see it in the future. And I'll point this out when we get there. Six, notice how important it is to keep track of what the final word of the sentence is going to be. I hope that like, I kind of communicated that a little bit. This is very important. If the sentence is going to end with a like with with a noun, we're, and we want to be polite, that des is going to be critical. And if it ends in a verb, we don't add des because that'd just be weird. Tabe mas des does not sound right. <laughs> if the final that's word, just... oh sorry, go ahead. What was that? No, I said yeah, that's true. That does sound weird. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I don't mean to like say anything weird like even you would agree like you don't know that much japanese but even that like type must test you're like ah what right <laughs> yeah like i'm not trying to insult you but like even people who have been studying japanese just a little bit they'll be like ah i already you already develop an ear for the fact that it sounds weird sounds good to me sounds <laughs> if the final word is going to be a verb we'll end it with a with a mas to make it distal uh distal or polite but if the sentence ends in a noun, we were going to, we're going to need some form of a desk to make it distal polite. This is a recurring and very important part of Japanese. The final word in the sentence or clause dictates how we end that sentence or clause. Um, I want to emphasize just how important this is. People who don't keep track of this end up giving up on Japanese when they start having to learn having to learn how to uh, modify nouns. A lot of people are like, oh, a noun, I'll just put a not adjective or an e adjective in front of it, which we haven't learned yet. But they're just like, that's easy. Or if it's a noun, like watashi no enpitsu, it's my pencil, we use a no, or we use the na, or we use the e adjective. It's very simple. 
And then they get to verbs. And they're like, huh? And they fall apart trying to modify nouns. In fact, after we teach this, I'm going to go directly into a not polite distal. And then we're going to go into uh, modifying nouns because it's very important. It's very important. Okay, anyway, keeping track of the final word of a sentence or a clause is very important to being able to be grammatically accurate. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, John's exhausted and tired. We got through the grammar. Some of it was a bit confusing and a bit wordy. Uh, last chance for questions <laughs> before I see you guys on Monday. Nope. <laughs> okay, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, guys. You guys have a good For night. Now. Yeah, no, that's fine. You're both exhausted. Make sure a uh, little dude gets his sleep. I hope. Uh, yeah. Sneak some whiskey into his uh into his dinner. <laughs> hey, look. CPS it's... shows up tomorrow. <laughs> I won't tell anybody. <laughs> oh, actually, this is I I really shouldn't say this story, but if it may, we we my wife was making a vodka sauce and she was using a pressure cooker. And this is a warning to everybody. When you're using alcohol to cook, usually the alcohol evaporates out. But if you have a lid on it with the pressure cooker, it doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we were both eating it later and we're like, ah, this still has that vodka in it. And the kids had already eaten some of it. And we're like, uh oh. <laughs> so the kids got a little bit crunk one night on accident. Well, that's pretty important to know because I would have never known yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For the record, we had no idea. And we, because our schedule, we had to feed them before we fed ourselves. The next day, I threw it all onto a pot without a lid on it. And I just let it simmer for like 10 hours. Yeah, the same <laughs> is true of cocaine. <laughs> yeah. No, with John. <laughs> Don't add cocaine to your pasta unless you really want to zip. <laughs> makes it tasty. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll see you Monday. Hey, yeah, see you guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you like, subscribe, and share this video to everybody you know and yell at them repeatedly until they subscribe as well. If you'd like to support me even more, head on over to patreon.com where for just $1 a month, three cents a day, that's it. It's darn near free. You can help me financially keep these videos coming. And as a reward for your Patreon donations, you get access to all of the miscellaneous things that I produce to help out my own students who, are, who I teach in person and also just things that I make for myself. And if you want a little bit more bang for your buck, head on over to Teespring where you can get lots of fun clothing, mugs, stickers, cell phone cases, all that I've designed. More designs to come. I hope you have yourself a happy, happy day. Peace out.